want to take you out to a pursuit that is currently taking place in Los Angeles. I want to put up this picture overhead as you can see a police pursuit going about 70 or so miles an hour. We'll jump into our Fox 11 coverage as soon as they can. As you can see, our, our feed just went out and it jumped right back in. So we're going to go right back out to it as police pursue the suspect in Southern California. You can see several CHP California Highway Patrol officers in pursuit as it ramps up to over 90 miles an hour. They were talking about potential uh, reckless driving as they were potentially trying a traffic stop uh, as the suspect now fleeing that scene. Uh, there's two uh, vehicles in pursuit right now, two uh, police vehicles in pursuit. Sometimes you see them following, sometimes you do not see them following. Uh, as you can see on the uh, I-5 there going southbound, I believe, uh, nearing 100 miles an hour, triple digits. And now we're seeing our Fox 11 team begin to uh, dive into this. So let's listen into this here on Live Now from Fox. Essentially, this was a failure to yield. This driver was allegedly driving erratically. They were lit up by the California Highway Patrol and the pursuit is on. This is the northbound side of the five, the north end of the valley, just coming away from the merge with the 170 in the Mission Hills area. Middle lane of traffic there, but this uh, individual has been weaving in and out. Unclear if it's just the driver or there are other occupants inside the vehicle. Moderate traffic at this time. We've seen a little bit of slowdown on that northbound stretch of the five. That's the opposite side of the morning rush, at least in this portion of the San Fernando Valley. This portion of Interstate 5, the Golden State Freeway, would take it into the Santa Clarita Valley. But there are some options up ahead. The 118 Freeway, the Ronald Reagan Freeway. And you can see this driver with our extreme nav system really picking up speed away on the right shoulder out of the lanes of traffic. You can see that SUV from the CHP trailing this individual. Now weaving back into the carpool lane. So in and out of traffic, northbound side of the five. Again, this is a failure to yield. This individual driving erratically here, a mid-sized sedan with tinted windows. They were lit up, they failed to pull over, and the pursuit was on. Tracking this in the air, on the ground, we have our extreme nav system there, and you can see the speeds. They fluctuated between about 75 and as high as 95 miles an hour. Five freeway, just passing the merge with the 405. That's where the 5 and the 405 split in the north end of the valley. We have that same split in Orange County there, and that northbound side of the 5 would take this pursuit up into Canyon Country, the Santa Clarita Valley. This is the Golden State Freeway, folks, so as you know, the 5 can extend all the way up to Northern California through the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valleys. Moderate traffic, some slowing, not full speed there, Right uh, lane now, but we saw this driver get a little agitated as the volume picked up, as it is right now, moving off the main lines of the roadway into the right shoulder area. Five and the 405 split here. This is the far north end of the San Fernando Valley in Silmar. You could see the SUV from the California Highway Patrol pursuing this individual, weaving from the far left carpool lane to the far right in and out of traffic. This is a highly commuted roadway here. And this portion of the five would be the busy side for the evening rush for folks coming out of downtown LA, out of Burbank, out of the south end of the San Fernando Valley, up towards the Santa Clarita Valley. You could pick up the 14 and go into the Antelope Valley as well. But you could see the speeds of the other automobiles here. Definitely slower than this pursuit here. The volume is picking up and this stretch of the five typically slows once you make your way up through the New Hall Pass. That's a stretch of the five that connects the Santa Clarita Valley with the San Fernando Valley. North five, again, if you're just joining us here on Fox 11, we have our extreme nav system up speed, upper right corner of your screen, location, top of your screen there. The CHP pursuit started when this uh, individual, and again, unclear if there's any other occupants inside this vehicle, was driving erratically and then was lit up. They made sure that there was plenty of units on scene before the pursuit started, and it is on, weaving its way, this pursuit, in and out of moderate to locally heavy traffic there on the northbound side of the five, heading up towards out of Silmar into the Santa Clarita Valley. We're going to continue to track this, uh, and hopefully it will come to a safe conclusion. Not a lot of options here. You can't conduct 
what we call the pit, pit maneuver, the pursuit interve intervention technique where they spin the vehicle out. That would put all those other motorists uh, in danger there. The spike strip uh, is an opportunity as well. The bottom line is, especially of late, where we've seen so many of these pursuits end in tragedy, where innocent individuals get uh, struck, killed, pedestrians, bicyclists, people in other vehicles as well, being T-boned by vehicles traveling in excess of 80 miles an hour. We've seen some really tragic situations with these pursuits. Law enforcement wants to do the best they can to bring this to an end with nobody getting injured, even including the occupants uh, of the vehicles there. And again, we do not know for sure if it's just the driver here. Do not know much more than just the fact that the CHP lit this individual up when they were driving erratically. They track vehicles. Obviously, they're running the plates, the registration, tr trying to see who this vehicle is connected with. But hey, if it's a stolen vehicle or if it's a borrowed vehicle, if it's a vehicle not to registered to that driver, that's not going to be of much help. It will definitely get some background information. In the carpool lane, the far left side here, northbound side of the five, north end of the valley, through the Granada Hills area. Again, the alternate uh, spots here for this uh, Pursuit would be onto the 14. That was the split of the 14, so stay in the course on the 5 freeway here at Balboa. This is the stretch of the 5. That's that flyaway transition coming away from the 14, dumping out of Canyon Country, out of the Antelope Valley, Lancaster and Palmdale, into that New Hall Pass, that narrow connection of the Santa Clarita Valley and the north end of the San Fernando Valley. And there it is. We got the truck lanes there. This is a highly commuted area in Southern California. This is really the start of the connector of the five, the Golden State Freeway. They don't call it the Golden State Freeway for, for anything. They call it the Golden State because it stretches across our entire state from up to the north, uh, up in the Sacramento Valley, up towards the Oregon border, all the way to the south, down towards the Mexican border. Uh, this sedan there, it looks like there's some possibly, it's either something uh, in the back, uh, back of the vehicle there or a sticker on the window. Uh, but this uh, vehicle really picking up speeds. Now watch our extreme nav system. And sometimes uh, that's not too accurate at times. Uh, once we're trying to catch up to the vehicle, at times we'll get the speed of the helicopter trying to keep up uh, with this pursuit. And that's what we're doing. A great shot there on this gloomy day. The roadways are dry at this time, but there is a chance, and I will have the forecast coming up uh, on the Fox 11 News at 5 o'clock of some drizzle, some light showers tonight into tomorrow. But as of right now, roadways are dry. Temperatures have been cooling off, overcast conditions. So as the sun starts to lower in Southern California, you're not going to have that glare. And all of that comes into play when you're dealing with a situation like this with other motorists, their visibility outside their windshield, with the law enforcement. Of course, the ceiling is an issue with helicopter traffic. Our own Stu has been grounded the last couple of mornings because of the low visibility and the low ceiling. And those uh, helicopters have been grounded at Van Nuys Airport. Because the onshore flow has increased and the marine layer has deepened, that ceiling, the base of those clouds has lifted, giving us uh, enough clearance, enough real estate between the ground and the base of those clouds to fly safely. Heading into the Santa Clarita Valley, into Newhall, into Canyon Country here, past the 14 freeway. So now it's it's either the five all the way to Bakersfield, into the San Joaquin Valley, or exiting the five freeway. But again, this stretch of the Golden State Freeway definitely gets busy. A lot of construction there as well over the last couple of years. Traffic slowing. And this driver's agitated. You could see uh, trying to move in and out of traffic, weaving in and out of traffic at a much higher speed then the flow of traffic here, left lane, right lane, CHP tracking. You can see the one SUV from the California Highway Patrol. They initiated the pursuit. We first picked it up in the San Fernando Valley. And as you can see, picking up speeds, yet again, a dangerous situation. There's times when it gets too dangerous that the CHP or any other lead agency of the law enforcement that is tracking the pursuit, the lead agency on this pursuit, will decide to back off and go into what we call tracking mode where a helicopter, a law enforcement helicopter, will continue to track the vehicle, see where it comes to a stop, wherever that is, and hopefully have some officers nearby to apprehend that individual. Bottom line, we don't want anybody, any innocent motorist traveling on this stretch of the northbound five at Calgrove Boulevard in Newhall, in the south end of the San Clu Santa Clarita Valley to get uh, injured. As we've seen, as I've mentioned uh, of late, so many uh, unfortunate incidents, uh, and that's not what we want to see at this time. California Highway Patrol again pursuing this uh, reckless driver northbound on the side of the 5 freeway here. They lit this individual up. 
because of the fact that they were driving recklessly. They gave them a chance to pull over, didn't pull over. Usually the protocol is to get uh, these units, more units, in play so that, uh, so that they can safely conduct this pursuit at this time. Five freeway northbound into the Santa Clarita Valley at Lyons Avenue here. Lots of construction. As I said, narrowed freeways, reduced lanes. Traffic was a bit slow there coming out of the New Hall Pass, away from the 14 there. And uh, that's what we're seeing now. But this, uh, this stretch of the five, again, will take you all the way up to the Tahone Pass, the Grapevine, the Ridge Route, that stretch of the five that connects uh, the Great Central Valley, the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valleys with the Santa Clarita Valley. Again, you're watching breaking news here from the Fox 11 newsroom. I'm meteorologist Rick Dicker tracking this pursuit. I've tracked many of these pursuits in my career here, being up in the helicopter and Sky Fox uh, for a couple of decades. I've seen all kinds of scenarios and this one, you just don't know how it's going to end. A lot of people say, why do they run? Well, they run because they're not in custody at this time. And there is a chance that they can uh, evade these officers. There is a chance that officers will pull back because of the erratic, the reckless nature of the pursuits here. Joining me now uh, is Christine Devine and the new, at the new set here at Fox 11 News. So, Christine, we've been tracking this from the San Fernando Valley, this reckless driver pursuit. You know, Rick, you have painted an accurate picture of Southern California. I'm reminded that uh, people are watching these pursuits from all across the country, even parts of the world, where you never expect that they'd be tuning in to Los Angeles to see a pursuit. For anybody who doesn't know Los Angeles, you painted a very accurate picture of the San Fernando Valley up to Santa Clarita. Of course, many viewers who are not from L.A. may think of Santa Clarita and think of Magic Mountain. So here we are. This is going to take you towards the grapevine, as you talked about, Rick. That grapevine during the, the winter and the cold weather gets icy. It's very cold up there. And this person is going to continue on clearly at the speeds of over 100 miles per hour now. I mean, Rick, when you were covering this pursuit, you, I don't think you saw these speeds of 100 miles an hour. Yeah, we were up uh, north of 90 for just a short time uh, when the driver got very agitated and weaved well to the right away from that solid white line on the side of the five freeway there so out of the main lines in the right shoulder area as i mentioned uh, christine you can see this stretch of the five heavily commuted by big rigs uh, carrying the produce all the goods uh, between uh, northern california and central california and this is the north five again folks we are now at magic mountain parkway near magic mountain heading up uh, towards castaic up the ridge route the grapevine towards the top of the Tahone Pass, Fort Tahone up there. Weather-wise, we don't have any snow or ice to be concerned with this afternoon, but definitely some winds. In fact, the National Weather Service has issued a wind advisory for the I-5 corridor. This is this stretch of the five that connects the Santa Clarita Valley, Southern California, with the San Joaquin Valley. A little bit uh, closer there, that CHP unit is really starting to tail this sedan here. Once again, a reckless driver, suspect, that's all we know. Driver was driving erratically, unclear uh, of uh, whether or not this is a man or a woman, or if there's anybody else inside this vehicle at this time. There's the, uh, the truck stop there off Interstate 5. So we are now heading up towards Castaic. Then it's going to be a wide open freeway, Christine, all the way up to the top of the pass uh, at 4,415 feet above mean sea level, high up in the Angeles National Forest, where the winds are really howling. And people may wonder how our meteorologist is so knowledgeable about things like the truck stop off the freeway. Uh, Rick was in Sky Fox for many, many years, especially on our morning show, Good Day LA, really knows the freeways inside and out. Uh, as we are expecting here, perhaps this freeway is much more wide open here as we get more into the mountainous region of Southern California as we get past that Magic Mountain area. Uh, this is a, a Volkswagen Passat or Volkswagen Jetta. A Jetta, as we believe from our car experts here at the station, uh, could hold a lot of gas. That's a full tank there. That driver could keep going and going and going. Uh, Rick, we know that CHP has different territories that they cover, different regions that they cover. I'm wondering, as we pass the Hazel Canyon there, uh, would they hand off to a different CHP jurisdiction as this car gets farther up the road? Can't even go to San Francisco. It, it, it's an opera. It's an orchestra here, how this system works. And when we say California Highway Patrol, we mean that this Highway Patrol uh, 
uh, system covers our entire state from Eureka to San Diego, eastward to Palm Springs, up towards Death Valley. But there are different CHP stations across our state, and they are all aware, at least regionally, here in Southern California and now up into the Kern County station, that yes, there is this pursuit. It is heading up to the north, Kern County. That's Bakersfield. Uh, that is the southern end of the San Joaquin Valley there at the base of the Grapevine when you wind your way down the top of the hill towards the Central Valley there. And that's where this pursuit could go. You mentioned it, Christine. How much gas does this uh, sedan have? If the sedan had a full gas, they get decent gas mileage. Uh, these vehicles, uh, this Volkswagen, possibly a Jetta, they can make it uh, you know, well into the Central Valley, up towards Fresno to Sacramento. Maybe not, but uh, this stretch of the five now, now that we're getting away out of the real busy area of Southern California, passing up through Castaic, up towards the top of the grapevine. You're gonna see lighter volume traffic, especially during the middle of the week. It is spring break uh, for many folks uh, this week and last week. People are traveling, but at this time, and I'm looking up ahead on our real-time traffic system, not seeing much in the way of slowdown as of yet on this stretch of the five. As I said, big rigs. Yeah, a lot of big rigs. There's a Walmart uh, truck there that is uh, taking goods up towards the north, towards Bakersfield or Fresno. Picking up speeds on an extreme nav system, 90 plus miles an hour. You can see the exact location. We have that GPS pinpoint location uh, equipped with Skyfox Interstate 5 there at Lake Hughes Road coming out of the Newhall area. Newhall has a CHP station as well. As you mentioned, uh, Christine, yes, there's different uh, substations of the California Highway Patrol, all of them very aware of what's happening or what could be coming their way. You know, it, it amazes me to think that we have a pursuit like this sort of as a reckless driving case. You have to wonder, is there more going on here that somebody is running like this? We have a history with law enforcement. Is this going to turn out to be a stolen vehicle? Is somebody wanted here? So as you're watching this pursuit here, Southern California, I-5 northbound past Castaic. If you don't know Castaic, great lake area. Lots of people go to go to kind of a weekend vacation type of thing or overnight vacation or even day vacation, take the boat up. Uh, but right here, very wide open. You can expect it to be very wide open, even though, as Rick mentioned, it is spring break. Um, not a lot of cars are on the freeway, so this pursuit could keep going and going and going. Not a situation where they would throw out a spike strip necessarily but, but with maybe, these speeds. Maybe now, Christine, because I mentioned the same thing earlier, but now that we are getting out of the busyness of mm -hmm. L.A., out of the San Fernando Valley, out of the Santa Clarita Valley, you could see a little bit more in the way of open freeway there. Yeah. They can position a CHP unit hold traffic because it's much lighter here, because it's going northbound out of Southern California without completely impacting a large area. That may be a possibility. For a spike strip? For a spike strip. Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes to a pit maneuver, a pursuit intervention technique, that is where we see a unit, a CHP, yeah. a law enforcement unit, nudge the back end, either the lower left back end or the right end, rear end of a vehicle, spinning it out spinning it likely 180 degrees, that's the goal, and ending the pursuit in that fashion, but, seeing that we are on, on a freeway and we're well above 45 miles an hour because the speeds typically have to be 45 miles an hour yeah. or less, they, just, they typically don't do that. You know, also, Rick, uh, the driver hasn't really endangered people, it seems. The speeds have been um, not at a point where you're seeing a lot of danger to other motorists on the road. Sometimes they just let these pursuits run themselves out. They let that driver run out of gas, or maybe they will hit a spike strip that takes the tires out, but they could just follow this car as far as this car is gonna go. And Rick, you have been covering this for a little longer than I have here, and this driver has been on the freeway the entire time, never once indicating uh, an exit at all? At, at least when we picked it up in the San Fernando Valley, uh, we picked it up uh, in the Sun Valley area into Arlita, always heading in a northbound direction out of the southeast end of the San Fernando Valley. When we say that geographically, you think of Glendale, you think of Burbank, you think of the NoHo area, North Hollywood, and that stretch of the valley, this pursuit headed north, first on the 170, then merging with the five, then taking the five northbound up into the Silmar area, through the Newhall Pass, had options. Had an option to get on the 118, the Ronald Reagan Freeway. Had an option, this pursuit suspect, uh, to get on the 210, the Foothill Freeway essentially making its way east on the 210 freeway into the La Crescenta Valley. Uh-uh, didn't do that. Stayed the course, northbound side of the five, 
maybe making a run for the San Joaquin Valley up towards Bakersfield here. Now, there is the 138, uh, which is a major highway, a little bit more up the hill, which would connect uh, this stretch of the five with the Antelope Valley, the far western end of the valley. The roadway, as I had mentioned, dry at this time. There are some widely scattered light showers, some areas of drizzle out there, but this stretch looks good. But it is windy. The National Weather Service and the CHP has issued that wind advisory for high winds, especially for high-profile vehicles, for what we call the I-5 corridor. That is the stretch of the Golden State Freeway that connects the Santa Clarita Valley with the San Joaquin Valley up through the Tehachapis, the far west end of the San Gabriel Valley, up towards the top of the Grapevine, the ridge route that we call the Grapevine. Something in the back there. You can see that, Christine. I'm not sure what that is mm -hmm. uh, through a slightly tinted uh, back uh, window there, yeah. uh, perhaps uh, on the console, the back console mm -hmm. there, unclear. And we still don't know if there's somebody else inside the vehicle. We have very little information. All that this driver was driving erratically, recklessly, CHP lit him up and the pursuit was on. So as we're watching this here, you know, I, I was thinking of that wide shot where right there you see these big rig trucks making their way northbound on the five freeway, kind of a portrait of, of, of the story of California where you have these trucks bringing their goods uh, either northbound or southbound, reminded of course when there is cold wintry weather, you have that trouble on the freeway. Sometimes they have to close that freeway to these big rigs. Uh, but look at the slower speeds of the big rigs, some loaded with their goods, I'm sure. Uh, this driver able to make his way up the freeway at high speeds, no problem. CHP though right behind him so that driver knows they're being followed. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, does this play out where the driver just runs out of gas? We talk about uh, drivers going to areas perhaps that are familiar to them. So if this driver started, as you said, in the San Fernando Valley, where are they going at yeah. this hour? And, and, and why? Some, it looks like uh, uh, the driver had this, his cell phone or her cell phone outside the window there for just a second. Uh, we saw that. The window just slightly rolled down. And it looked like uh, the driver had their cell phone out. I'm not sure what they were doing. You could now see a couple of other CHP vehicles. These are the cruisers as opposed to the SUV that we saw earlier. But this is making its way well north on the 5 freeway up towards Templin Highway here. This is getting into the real rural area of Southern California up towards the top of the Grapevine, the Ridge Road. But a wide open Interstate 5, lots of big rigs there, but you could see the volume, mostly light right now. So this individual, if he has a lot of, or she has a lot of gas, can continue on their way with no traffic issues. I have memories right here of making this drive to go see family in Oakland. Rick, <laughs> this is the exact route that we would take uh, to go all the way to Oakland, California, up north, uh, several hours away. The question is, does this driver have that much gas in the tank? And do they have perhaps some location in mind that they're going to exit the freeway? And, and, perhaps they don't want to go and, that far north. They might want to swing around and go back down south. And, and that's what we just don't know. We've yeah. seen that. We've yeah. seen them do 180s, uh, get off the freeway, get right back on in the opposite direction here. Usually law enforcement, and in this case, the CHP, the lead agency on this pursuit of this reckless driver, knows a bit more about what's happening than we do as we watch it from Sky Fox here. And as we travel farther to the north, uh, up uh, the grapevine, the ridge route there, that gray that makes its way up towards the very top of the hill, where we do have so many traffic problems, weather-related problems, uh, it really is the major connector. It's the lifeline between the San Joaquin Valley, between the Sacramento Valley, what we call the Great Central Valley of California with all the agribusiness that's there. When that stretch of the five is cut off, then there's some problems. Well, we are seeing a little bit of problems there. You can see that's where part of that hill came down. Remember that? Because of the because atmospheric the river, the most oh, recent atmospheric right. river, that hill came down. Right lane is coned off there. And what you will see when we see the traffic that is on this stretch of the five freeway, the northbound side of the five freeway there, that the right two lanes are where the big rigs are supposed to stay off to the right there and that's what we have seen uh, these rigs uh, loaded possibly or unloaded are supposed to stay to the right two lanes and this driver staying away from that side because the traffic's going to be slower because those big rigs have a little bit uh, extra trouble making it up mm -mm -mm the hill there uh, because they could be loaded uh, they are so heavy so this driver is staying to the left there's another truck there right mm -hmm. lane right two right. lanes those trucks are supposed to say stay we're seeing three chp units two cruisers and an suv tracking this northbound pursuit you're watching it here live on fox 11 that started 
in the San Fernando Valley as a reckless driver, and the California Highway Patrol is the lead agency on this pursuit. And Rick, we're seeing somebody wave something out of the window. What that is, what their intention is, I have no idea. I don't know if they're dropping something out of the window or they're trying to signal the helicopter. And you talked about us not knowing a lot about who's in this vehicle. Is there a passenger? Is there somebody being held against their will in this pursuit? Uh, we just don't know. Not a lot of information here. Wondering, because we're not hearing that it's a stolen car. So does the CHP know who the driver is? Have they run the license plate and have good knowledge as to who they're following and what this is all about, the person's history? Have they been in touch by phone with family members or even the driver themselves? Don't know this information. All we know, this driver has made no move to get off this five freeway here to perhaps take an exit, swing around, go back down toward Los Angeles. Uh, right now, this driver continuing on this wide open road. Who knows if they even know where they're going? Yeah, and, and sometimes vehicles like this are stolen. So that yeah. essentially shuts down law enforcement's uh, ability to find out much more about the driver, the mm -hmm. suspect being pursued here. They've obviously run the plates, any type of registration information that they have on this vehicle. They're doing background checks. They likely already determined uh, if this uh, vehicle has been stolen or if it is being commandeered by somebody who is actually connected to this vehicle. And if so, and you can see the driver's side window is down, and I saw that yeah, as well, Christine. Right. It appeared that uh, the driver, now back up again, the window uh, rolled back up there, did to have something, his hand was uh, outside the window. It appeared to have been a cell phone, and huh. perhaps he was taking uh, a photo or video almost uh, of the units tracking uh, him behind. Again, back window there. This is a Volkswagen here, uh, a mid-sized sedan here, four-door, uh, tint, slightly tinted windows there. Something on the back console of the, of the vehicle there as well. Uh, you can see it there in the back windshield. Uh, unclear of what that is, uh, but what is clear, a wide open freeway, northbound side of the five, heading up the ridge route, the grapevine, the top of Interstate 5, uh, where it meets the Tehachapi's near Fort Tejon near the Gorman area there. No worries in terms of snow or ice. All of that is long gone, but there are some very strong winds. At this time, the roadway is dry. The visibility is good, unlike it was uh, this morning and the last couple of mornings across Southern California because of that strong marine influence, which kept helicopters on the ground, including our own student up at Van Nuys Airport uh, because of the reduced visibilities and that thick marine layer, thanks to that springtime pattern that we have here in Southern California. But here we go. Wide open freeway, Christine, heading northbound out of Southern California up into the Central Valley, the San Joaquin Valley towards Bakersfield. You know, you talk about the weather we've been having. It really doesn't feel like spring, at least where we are here at our station at Fox 11. Uh, overcast, cooler conditions. Uh, but you're, and we're expecting to have a full forecast from you at 5 o'clock yes. right now, though this pursuit, you've been covering this for 30 minutes now. For, for law enforcement, it's been one of the, quote, perhaps easier pursuits in that it hasn't been endangering the lives of others directly like we've seen in so many pursuits with crazy high speeds on surface streets and blowing through intersections with pedestrians and people, you know, walking their dog or kids coming home from school. We are coming up on rush hour traffic here, but we're so far north, you're not going to really see a rush hour crowd here on the freeway, Rick. Yeah, we're out of Southern California yeah. proper here now. Uh, for a time, we did see some slowing in the valley, north end of the 170, where we first picked this pursuit up in the valley, merging with the northbound side of the five, because that is the busy side during the evening rush. Uh, typically, the inbound commute during the morning, we're heading westbound on the 10, the 60, and the 210 towards. Oh, he lost uh, control there a little bit, went off the side, perhaps was distracted, maybe looking at his phone or what's in oh. his rear view mirror right. or her re rear view mirror towards the units, the CHP units, but uh, a little bit of fishtailing there that we saw losing traction with the roadway, uh, the surface there off to the left in the left shoulder area, uh, a little bit different uh, than the main line uh, of the asphalt there on Interstate 5. North end of the five, if you're just joining us, a high speed pursuit on the Golden State Freeway heading out of Southern California proper up towards the top of the grapevine, towards the San Joaquin Valley. That would take this pursuit into Bakersfield, into Kern County. And yes, law enforcement units in Kern County are very aware because that's where this pursuit may end up. Lots of big rig traffic. Those big rigs supposed to stay in the right lane or the right two lanes. That's what we've seen here. The other lanes wide open. Uh, and this driver uh, has had uh, a wide open view up uh, towards the top of the hill here. 
on the five. Once Let's again, unclear if there's anybody else inside that vehicle. We have, so, yeah, we have information here. Solo driver. Let's give you some background here. Started on the northbound 101 freeway, Sunset and Gower. We're talking Hollywood. Driver started in the Hollywood area, making its way now past, you know, familiar in spots the like Pass. Kawanga Pass and the Magic Mountain area, and now North Antelope Valley. So this driver committed to this pursuit for some time here on the freeway. We know they've been holding a cell phone out of the window. Question is, whom are they in contact with? Yeah, Have that's they called family? Have they called friends? Have, has law enforcement been in touch with them? Not a stolen car we're hearing also. Okay. So if not stolen, the CHP run the plates. They know who this is. Have they been in contact? Do they know what's going on here with the person? Perhaps another background story as to why they're running like this. Yeah, and, and you just mentioned where we were just learning where this pursuit started. In Hollywood, that stretch of the 101 freeway uh, by the Hollywood Reservoir, by the Capitol Records building there, off of Sunset, off of Santa Monica Boulevard, up through the Cuenca Pass, a stretch of the 101 that connects Hollywood with the San Fernando Valley, passing Universal Studios, then to the Hollywood Split, where the 101, the 170, the 134 all merge, stayed the course northbound and transitioned to the North 170 through North Hollywood, up into the valley, connecting with the five, and that's where we still are. Yeah. But that's a lot of real estate there. Starting in the Hollywood area, unclear how long this male had been driving uh, prior to that. The vehicle, uh, as you just mentioned, Christine, does connect with the driver. At least that's what law enforcement says here. And this is heading northbound up towards the top of the Tahone Pass, the grapevine. This is the stretch where many of you at home have taken so many times if you are traveling up to the north. This is sort of the shorter way, even up to the Bay Area, if you don't want to take the scenic route, the 101 freeway, northbound side of the five, into the San Joaquin Valley. You know, I, I'm thinking if I'm a, a viewer watching from some other part of the country or somewhere else across the nation, and I'm, wait, 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 exiting. what are we exiting? Looks like we're, uh, we're, we're making an here? exit here. This is Smoky Bear Road. This is exit 195 off the five. Is something wrong with the tire? Uh, we're hearing that. Oh my gosh, there goes the tire. Yeah. Did this driver hit a spike strip and, and perhaps? There, there goes that. Yeah, pit, there, pit there goes now right the there. pit maneuver. Now we can do the pit maneuver. Perfectly executed. 180 there. Now this is a dangerous situation. Oh, oh head on. on crash there. He's going to run. He's going to run. Gone. He's bailing. This is a foot pail. A male driver here running off Interstate 5, Smoky Bear Road here. When we saw that fishtailing occur, that may have been when a spike strip was laid down. As I mentioned, that that was an opportunity. Oh, we're, motorists. Wow. We're worried now about motorists. Yes, Other this people. is really oh, tough. Oh, wow, that's oh, so man. dangerous. It is a oh. wide open freeway. Okay. Wide open made it, made it across the northbound lanes, now across the southbound lanes. Oh, that is frightening to watch, except we know the traffic is fairly light. Okay, okay made now. it across, and, and now he can take a breather because he thinks he may have gotten away a little bit. But a young male suspect here, a reckless driver suspect, possibly a spike strip was deployed on Interstate 5 once we got out of the traffic there. That's why we saw that weaving, that fishtailing as I saw. And then uh, this driver knew but, but, that, but yeah, his I don't behavior know what here. Do. Very alarming. Is he going to try to stop uh, he's another He's holding vehicle? his right side there. May, does that mean that he could have a weapon? They have to. They they definitely have to expect the worst here. And if oh, you oh, ever encounter a situation like this, folks, just call nine one one. Don't my, my try fear to help is, out. is he going to try to flag down some driver who does not what's go, know what's going on here? Of course. Uh, running back towards the street area where law enforcement is. He was. He was uh, trying look to at the traffic. At they're slowed though. That is very scary for those motorists. Trying to trying to get uh, trying to get the attention of a, a driver there and possibly try to. Uh, commandeer another vehicle. Now, I'm not sure why the northbound side of the sea right there. Oh, yeah, trying, trying to get, to get in, in. He's trying, trying to hardjack a vehicle. This guy's trying to be a, a hero. Don't do that. You don't know what you're dealing with at this time. This individual could be armed. And, and I did see, Christine, that uh, with his left hand, he was holding something. Again, oh, trying to goodness. open the door. He is, he is trying to get away. He's desperate at this time, trying to get in another vehicle. He's got to be out of gas. Well, here's my question. Where is law enforcement in this picture here? He couldn't have gotten too far away from where law enforcement was. Okay, he must they see something because uh -huh. he's, he's jumping and running down into this ravine here. Uh, so we'll see. He, uh, he made a quick move there. 
So they're could they're watching, and I have to assume that oh, they he, are, he went they down are by, trying to get some. That's where the vehicle. Yeah, that's, that's where, where the vehicle ended. So he's going back down onto Smoky Bear Road, where this car exited from the northbound side of the five after losing a tire. Most likely, there's the CHP unit. He was freaked out by seeing that ah, CHP right, unit. He jumped right. down into the ravine. Little does he know that there's other CHP units down there because that's where this pursuit came to end. That was a hard front end crash, too, by the way. So we have to look. Okay, it looks like he's got his hands up. So yeah. it looks like he's uh, he's going to be, uh, you could see a flurry of CHP officers well, here he, he, underneath this overpass. He literally ran right down there where CHP was. There you there see, there they're okay. making, going in the to taser, make that arrest. They got the canine out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, looks like he's not fully complying, making it a little bit difficult for law enforcement there. Uh, the face of that canine would scare me enough wow. to comply right there. Yeah. It looks like they are, they, they've got this suspect in a place where they can bring him into custody. But until those hands are cuffed, That's until right. those hands are cuffed, it's still not and, safe for and, those officers. And, and we have to assume that they've already checked the car. I know that we got some intel saying that it was just the driver inside that vehicle, that dark colored uh, sedan, a Volkswagen sedan. But they've cleared that vehicle, the trunk as well, held up the code four fingers, making sure there's nobody else they have to apprehend or any other worries. Uh, and now the suspect, the driver, on a pursuit, everybody at home, that took us from Hollywood, the northbound side of the 101, near the Capitol Records building, up through the Cuenga Pass, passing Universal Studios, into the San Fernando Valley, passing the Hollywood Split, up through North Hollywood, merging the 170 with the northbound side of the 5, into the valley, up into Ridge Route, the, the New Hall, the Santa Clarita Valley, all the way almost to the top of the grapevine here, and it does appear, we'll have to get confirmation, that this vehicle came in contact with a spike strip, which was a good area, less traffic up there on Interstate 5, lots of CHP units uh, up in that area, threw that spike strip out. I saw the vehicle fishtail a bit. That may have been the driver trying to avoid it or actually hitting that spike strip because not too long after, the vehicle started uh, losing control, exiting on Smoky Bear Road there. Tire blows off pit maneuver because the speed was low. CHP was aggressive there. Thankfully, turning that car 180 degrees, but a hard front end impact. Again, we have to hope that the officer or officers inside that CHP unit are okay. You know, and then the, uh, the suspect running across the freeway. Thankfully, nobody else that we saw yeah. impacted. J just prayers that he didn't get into anybody's vehicle as he was trying there on the freeway. All right, that present brings another pursuit here in Southern California to an end. You've been watching Fox 11 News. Our you're just watching our Fox 11 coverage there on Live Now from Fox as the uh, this coming to an end there as they were giving some great coverage overhead as it made its way uh, north through Southern California. I'm Andy Mack. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. I want to take you right back out to some of the uh, what happened, what we saw on this uh, less than an hour long pursuit, but certainly uh, they heard the spike strip being used. I want to take you back out to this moment from uh, just a little bit ago, as you can see, uh, as you can see, hitting that spike strip just there, uh, fishtailing just a little bit as uh, it is uh, still running there as it pursued. And then this next one as they exited and then police there for this pit maneuver there, hitting the back end of this vehicle sending it spinning. We're going to see it as uh, another vehicle comes on and uh, this suspect will leave the vehicle and run across the highway. We're just going to keep with this one just for a little bit. If you missed it here uh, of this reckless driver as they pursued from, you heard Hollywood up north along the I-5 northbound as the suspect uh, reckless driving uh, was the initial report there as it runs across a very busy freeway there in Southern California, hopping the median once more, crossing over another time. Uh, they also saw him potentially try to get into a different vehicle, but to no avail uh, as people just drove by, locked their doors. Uh, obviously, people driving in this area didn't know what was happening, uh, so they uh, weren't able to. Uh, they saw someone on the side of the highway uh, that was trying to get in their vehicle, and they did not allow that to happen. Uh, so, of course, this coming in as they uh, did finally uh, detain this suspect as well as they put ha handcuffs uh, as they uh, follow this pursuit there from our Fox 11 team here on Live Now from Fox.